There are so many different guards that you can use for your fighting, whether you're doing Muay Thai, boxing, or MMA. These are different guards, and these are the pros and cons of using each guard. What is going on, guys? It's Dylan the Machete here, professional Muay Thai fighter, amateur MMA fighter, and we are going to be talking about the different guards for Muay Thai, MMA, boxing, whatever you want to do, and the pros and cons. The first guard we're going to be talking about is where you've got both your hands glued to your head. I don't really know what you call it. I'm going to call it the double up guard. What are some pros and what are some cons of this? Now, a couple of pros of this is you can deal with people throwing multiple punches. You know, a lot of people, you can kind of catch their punches on the guard. Obviously, if you've got big gloves on, or sorry, little gloves, MMA, you've got to make sure that your hands are a little bit more open. You've got to make sure you're moving your hands, like having a lookout, making sure that you can see what your opponent's doing. Another good thing that, about this guard is that you can use it to walk forward on people. So you can come forward, you've got this guard, you can walk forward, and you're not really going to get hit as much as long as you can see them and you can move your hands and pressure them and break them down and get into the clinch, whatever you want to do. And you can also let your hands go from this guard. So this is a very good guard for just letting your power punches go because you just go from A to B, straight back, A to B, straight back. You throw your hook, come straight back. You don't really have to worry about too much shots coming back. And this is a really great guard for feeling out people and kind of downloading the data. You know, you see someone like Peter Yarn, he's always got this guard, he's always showing up. He's just watching his opponent, watching his opponent. He'll do that for the first maybe one or two rounds, figure his opponent out and then he'll break them down from there. Now, what is the main problem with this guard that I've found? It is jabs and tapes. So obviously because you're here, your hand has to travel further to hit your opponent. But if they've got a different guard, or even if they're just longer than you, they can jab you. And especially if your hands are here, they can jab you right down the middle. They can tape you in the face, straight down the middle. So that is one problem with this guard. And it's probably the biggest problem that I've found with this guard. You know, if I'm kind of walking someone down, but they're a good boxer with a good jab. You know, they can just whack me and teat me and kind of keep me away in that essence. So make sure if you've got this guard, you're covering up tight. If someone is jabbing you, you got to move that little thing in here. You got to move your hand here, make sure that they're not jabbing you too much. And this is where you kind of got to mix up the guards a little bit so it's not happening to you. So as the first half we're going to be talking about, I'm, going to talk, I'm just going to call it the double up. Next guard we're going to be talking about is the long guard. So this is where you've got one hand kind of on your head. You can kind of move it here. You can have it here. Kind of depends who you're fighting. So one really good thing about the long guard is that you can keep your opponents long. That's why it's called the long guard. So you can either keep them long with the jab. You can keep them long with the teep. If you're a good kicker, you can kick them and then you can come straight into this long guard. I was doing that a lot in my last fight where I'd kick my opponent because he was a boxer. I'd come straight into that long guard. He couldn't hit me. If you're a good knee fighter, you can use the long guard so you can't get punched. You just got to make sure that your whole head is covered. If you do this, you're still open for hooks. If you do this, you're still open for hooks on this side. So you got to make sure the long guard is tight when you're doing it and you're throwing knees. However, one of the big kind of downfalls of this guard is uppercuts and body shots. So if you've got someone that's a good volume puncher and they kind of know how to mix up their shots and make you think a little bit more, they can throw uppercuts. So if I'm here and I'm locked up, like if I'm kind of using this long guard, I can get uppercut and straight down the middle. And even if I close it like that, well, now I'm open for hooks and overhand. So this is where it kind of comes down to who you're fighting. Who are you fighting? What are they good at? And which long guard do you think will be suitable? You know, I always used to long guard so much like this. And then out the back for my last fight, I found out who I was fighting, found out that he was good over to, at overhands. And I had to change my guard to this. You know what I mean? Body shots are very big to be able to land on this guard because you're here. All this is open. So you got to kind of learn how to switch and... Change your guard depending who you're fighting, what they're good at. Now, a guard that is very good for blocking body shots is the Philly Shell. Made famous by Floyd Mayweather, and it's an amazing guard for boxing. This is why Floyd Mayweather rarely gets hit. He can kind of stay there with the Philly Shell. He can kind of cover up and move, and you know he can make sure that he's not getting hit by people. But boxing isn't the only thing this is good for. You can also defend leg kicks very well with this guard. You know, you kind of do that with your leg, your you can't do this with your boxing, you know, okay, you don't really have to worry about the boxing shot. Someone throws a leg kick, you just check it, easy done. Sean Strickland did this very well against Israel Adesanya, causing the upset at the UFC in Sydney last year. But there are some problems with this guard. The main one, knees. So even if I'm using this long guard, even if I cover up my body with the long guard, a big knee and someone that has a lot of power in that knee, they're still going to be able to take the power out of you. They're still going to be able to break your arm down when it comes to those knees. You got a big body puncher, they're going to be able to kick the shit out of your body because it's kind of hard to check up or like check with your rear leg when you're kind of in this guard because of where your kind of balance with your body is, you know what I mean? 
And another problem with this guard is you don't have the same distance as a long guard. So you kind of got to be a little bit close to your opponent. You don't kind of know where they are unless you're constantly throwing out jabs and coming back to here. That's a good way to kind of neutralize that. But for the most part, you're not going to have the same range as a long guard. Next up, we're going to be talking about the tie guard or palms out, which is kind of this guard right here. This is probably one of my favorite guards. It's pretty much my standard kind of guard that I use if I'm just kind of in front of someone. The reason I love this guard so much is because it's really good for catching shots. So if someone, you know, they jab you, catch. They cross, catch. They throw elbows, you can move their elbows out the way. They throw teeps, you can scoop it and catch it. You can push it out the way and catch it because your palms are already open. You're so much more relaxed. You can see shots coming more and you can just kind of defend yourself a lot more responsibly in this. Now, problem with this guard is you can lose power in your punches, obviously, because your elbows are a lot higher. You know, I was always kind of taught thumb to eyebrow in Muay Thai. You can lose power on your punches. They do take a little bit longer to get there. So you've got to make sure with this guard, when you're throwing your punches, you close your fist. You're not punching like that. You've got to make sure on the way, boom, you close your fist. You squeeze your fist as hard as you can, get that optimal power. And a big one is if your hands are this high, you're open for body shots, especially body punches, body straights. All these shots are open. So you got to make sure that if your thumbs are up high, you can bring them down, bring them back up. This is also a great guard for defending elbows. So the way I've also always kind of been taught with this guard is the closer you are to your opponent, the higher they are, the further away, kind of less or like lower that you can afford to have your guard. But that's kind of a catch-22, you know. Are you willing to take a body shot to save yourself from an elbow? Because if someone's throwing a big elbow and then they're throwing a big body shot, I'd way rather block that elbow and then take the body shot rather than miss that elbow and block the body shot. Now, a great guard, which is really good for boxing, is the double out here. So almost kind of seen as like the Irish stance, I guess you would want to call it if you're kind of out here. But this is a great guard for landing your jab. So if I'm here in front of someone, my jab has so much less distance to travel. I notice my jabs are harder in this position. My punches can kind of be set up a lot more easily with my jab. And a lot of time people are going to stay away from you a lot more when you're using this guard because this makes me look a lot closer than this. You know what I mean? Like here, I look closer to you. Here, I don't. So people aren't going to be willing to come in as much. So if you want to kind of keep someone long, you can kind of go between this guard and the long guard if you want. That's kind of a good strategy if you're trying to keep someone longer. You can stay here, you can jab, you can take, you can do all that stuff. So great guard for keeping long. What is the problem with this guard? You're open for hooks and uppercuts. So if I'm here, this is all open. Even if I'm here, this is open. So I wouldn't be doing this guard if I'm shorter than someone. If I'm like shorter than someone, I'd way rather have this guard or I'd way rather have a long guard or I'd way rather have a Philly shell, something like that. This is a great guard if you're longer than someone because you can keep them at range. You're, they're not going to want to come into your range because you seem so much closer to them than that you actually are. So you've got to make sure if you are using this guard and someone comes in for your hooks, you can block up like that. Switch between the long guard and this guard. That's a great way to kind of neutralize this problem. But just make sure if you're using this guard, hooks and uppercuts can be landed on you. So guys, those are just some guards that I wanted to go over and make sure that you guys kind of knew the pros and cons of them. Obviously, no guard is perfect. There's going to be pros and cons no matter what you do. There's always going to be an opening and there's always going to be a counter for what you do. But you just got to know these guards, know what is appropriate at what time. So guys, check out my shit down below. Follow me on social media, TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Make sure you like all that. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I've got plenty of good videos coming along from fight vlogs to breakdowns to all that stuff. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.